San Francisco 49ers pick is in. The first pick of Chip Kelly era as the coach in San Francisco. The host of Super Bowl 50. I think it's got to be DeForest Buckner. They took a Reek Allenstead a year ago, and this kid's a better football player. With the seventh pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select DeForest Buckner, defensive end, Oregon. Pressure comes, they get to him and take him down. DeForest Buckner, defensive tackle. Buckner, get him! 2015 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. There he is in Hawaii. Second straight year, the beautiful state of Hawaii has held a draft party. There's the Forrest Buckner at home. He is now a San Francisco 49er. Adding him to the defensive mix. And there are the fans learning the pick moments ago of the draft party for the Niners in San Cloud, California. And you like the pick, Mark. You like the pick. I do like the pick. I'm wondering if the Laramie Tunsil situation affected this because they wanted an offensive player. Now, Buckner reminds me of Calais Campbell, six foot seven, two ninety one, power and length. He's ideally a five technique, which is the defense that San Francisco plays. He reminds me of Calais Campbell when he stays low and plays with leverage. Look at the. He's low. He's controlled the offensive lineman. His vision finds the football. Again, where is he? He's just shrugging off blocks, finds the football in the run game. As a nickel inside rusher in sub package, his length and power is going to cause problems for people. And again, lines up across from the tackle, slants down, crosses the face of the guard. This is a long, powerful dude. Well, now, last year they picked Eric Armstead, the angular one from Oregon. So two teammates, I tell you what, if they want to start a basketball team, they've got a heck of a start on the defensive front, don't they, Mel? A 6'7", 291 pounds, the Forrest Buckner is boom. Long arms, huge hands, and I think the improvement as a pass rusher this past year. Four sacks two years ago, 10 and a half this past season. Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. When you watch a guy like the Forrest Buckner, the inside pressure, the ability to be a good run defender, I don't think he has that big outside threat that a lot of teams want, but he's a developing player, highly competitive. His best football is still to come. Plays a little high, needs to work on leverage, work on that proper pad level. If he does that, Lou and John, I think you have yourself a really good defensive line who can really disrupt throwing lanes, bat down passes. Look, this is this is a Trent Baalke type of pick. He knows that he needs to get back to what made San Francisco relevant when Coach Harbaugh was there, and that is taking care of the offensive and defensive lines. And look, when you look at a guy like DeForest Buckner, who really is, really is scheme versatile. This is a guy who can survive in a 4-3. He can play in a 3-4. He can rush on third down as your three technique or your one technique. And more importantly, he's a guy who's going to help them in the run game. Look, San Francisco last year gave up 2,020 rush yards. Their most rush yards allowed out of defense in a season since 1980. That's just something you can't have. This guy will address that need. And when you pair him with guys like Eric Armstead, look, they'll be, they'll, they'll work their way back to relevance and the only way to do that is to do it by starting up front john he looks pretty good coming off the bus doesn't he no doubt about it i just worry about uh, him being a three down player when i watch him play last year in the bowl game against tcu they have a 20 28 point lead in the fourth quarter all you need is one sack and he can't get off the ball and get it done and at the point of attack i have seen buckner give up some real estate at the point of attack and he's got to get his pad level addressed here he is against jack conklin of michigan state he has work to do certainly as six foot eight man playing football at the point of attack with his pad level he's got to prove he can rush the passer and be a three down player especially in the fourth quarter when games are decided i have my questions about buckner going this high but my friend chip kelly loves those oregon ducks here's another one
Here we go. The Kansas City Chiefs have traded the 28th pick to the San Francisco 49ers. With the 28th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Joshua Garnett, guard, Stanford. <laughs> you go. You're, out, man. You're on the floor, coach. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. You, know, you know what you get when you get Joshua Garnett? You get a brilliant young man, right? He's a biology major, major at Stanford University, but you're going to get a tough son of a gun. This guy loves football. He's physical. He's nasty. He's got some work to do as a pass protector, which he improved every single year. But right now, you're going to get an above the line, one of the best physical run blockers you're going to come see come out of college in the last couple of years. And I can't wait to see this young man play on Sunday. Fantastic. They were number 21 running the football last year. You know when you get Chip Kelly as your head coach because you've coached against them, you better be in shape and you better get ready to run the football because that's what it is. Now, Coach, let's take a look at him here. Why don't you take this one, Coach? You know, you see Josh, he can, he can sink now. He can sink in pass pro. He's strong as a knock. He's one of the strongest guys in the conference, let alone on our football team. He can down block. He can pull. He's got great feet. Uh, he's physical, and he's that guy that starts the fight. You know, we, we start the fight up front, and Josh was our, our fight starter. He is physical, he is nasty, and he is ready for Sundays. Talk about a guy winning the Upland Trophy, right? First team All-American. You make him a team captain for a reason, don't you? There's no question about it. He's a leader. Uh, he's one of those guys you want to have up front. And what a lot of people don't understand about Chip Kelly, Chip Kelly and I have become friends the last couple of years. Chip Kelly loves to run the football. Yes. He loves to run the football. He loves nasty guys with an attitude up front, and that's what they're getting to Josh Garnett. Remember, they lost Alex Boone over there, okay? Yep. The year before that, they lose Mike Yapati to the Arizona Cardinals. They need to replace that. They used to have the best offensive line. In the, in, the, in the league, and all of a sudden, they're better today. Don't like that. Me. Powerful Don't bubble me. butt. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, there you go. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, it's cool, man. Come on. Oh, Come on. Right, Cal and Stanford can hog it out. <laughs> no, right yeah, you know you what, though? I mean, this kid staying in the Bay Area. This is going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting. Once again, Chip Kelly loves to run the football. Yep. This is not a drop back passing. So we talk about getting better in pass pro. This is a downhill running football team. Now, there will be some side to side runs, but Chip hates to, hates to lose yardage. Yep. And that was one of the things yep. we were one of the best teams in the nation, not losing yardage. It's because the guys like Joshua Garnett, he does not allow penetration. I can't believe this move. It's the most <laughs> shocker to me. If you're going to go back into the first round for a guard out of Stanford, I didn't even think it was the best guard in the draft. I thought it was Cody Whitehair at Kansas State. Uh, I look at a guy like Joshua Garnett, big. You think about his ability to blow defenders off the ball. Made some nice blocks, pulling and getting to the second level. I thought he needed to be more consistent. Pass protection, balance sometimes off, hand placement's okay. But I look, to me, underwhelmed by his overall performance on tape. I know some people liked him more than I did, Lou. I thought he was a mid-second round type guy, late second round guy, trade back into the first round. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I understand what they're trying to do as far as building the defensive line, building the offensive line, and kind of getting back to the formula that made them successful previously. Again, when Coach Harbaugh was there. But you I'm with you, Mel. I don't, I don't understand trading back into the first round to get a guy here who I believe as the down progresses, some of his limitations really start showing up, and he's really not a two-position player. He's not a guy that you're going to put at tackle, so you're drafting, you trade it back into the first round to draft the one-position player who you have some concerns about whether or not he's really worthy of being a first-round pick anyway. So, look, I understand it philosophically. You want to build the football team front to back. We'll see how this pick turns out. Well, they gave up 53 sacks last year. And it wasn't good enough. And you got to get some linemen from someplace. I mean, they're not going to fall out of the sky. So they like Garnett. They didn't have to go far to scout him. He did yeah. win the Outland Trophy. And he's been in a pro-style offense. He is a mauler. He's a physical run blocker. He struggles at times in pass protection. I'm surprised that they traded up to get him in the first round. But 67th player on my board. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, here, I mean, to the I'm line, to your point, remember you like mad. two, three years ago, this line was untouchable. Yeah. Really, only Joe Staley was back, right? Of uh, what this line was great. So here's the details of the... inside the San Francisco 49ers war room, courtesy no, of the nice. Honda war room cam there. They're making the 68th overall pick. Troy Vincent back. To announce the San Francisco 49ers selection, 
please welcome from Auburn University, the 49ers 2010 Walter Payton Man of the Year, linebacker, Takeel Spikes. And also from the University of Notre Dame, the seventh pick overall in the 1994 draft by the 49ers, defensive tackle, Bryant Young. I see you. With the 68 pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Will Redman, defensive back, Mississippi State. Will Redman from Mississippi State coming off of an injury, Red, and this guy, look, I, I think if he'd have been healthy this year, as athletically gifted as he was, he could have snuck into the back of the first round. Uh, this is somebody that reminds me a lot of Janoris Jenkins when you study him on tape. You'll see him in zone. He's very instinctive, and he's got a big-time burst out of his plant when he drives on the ball. Hurt his knee, obviously wasn't able to run and put a time down on paper, but I think he would have tested very, very explosive as an athlete. I think this is a good pickup here for the 49ers. Yeah, needed a little help there at cornerback as well, getting a little thin. Had some safeties they picked up here in the last couple of years through the draft. All right, so the 49ers have made their pick at number 68. The Jacksonville Jaguars getting set at 69 as you take a look at the 49ers draft party there in Santa Clara. Facing a four-game suspension to start the season for the Cowboys. Okay, the San Francisco 49ers shockingly have not made a pick involving the Pac-12. Uh, they have gone cornerback Will Redmond, and this is a kid who just couldn't stay on the field, but when he was there, Mel, he made all kinds of plays. Yeah, he was a pretty good player. I think you look at the injury, the ACL in practice October 20th. Up until that point, he had a couple picks. In 2014, he was listed as a backup and nickelback. You let him in interceptions. I watched him against Texas A&M and LSU in 2015, Ole Miss in 2014. Didn't see him tested a lot against the Aggies or the Tigers. Unreliable tackler, didn't like that. And the old Miss game, a good amount of good, decent amount of bad. So I don't, I, you know, Will Redmond flash Todd, he's got talent, but the injury, inconsistent performance. Can the 49ers get it out of them? We'll see. Yeah, I, I actually like him a little bit more than you do. I, only seven starts, so it was right. tough. I remember evaluating last year, and he was really basically their nickel corner. Seven starts all came this past year. I think he has the instincts and cover skills to fit in either man or zone. Reminds me a little bit of Portland Finnegan. When you look at his skill set and, his, and his, yeah, his mental demeanor, and he's going to be really good on special teams, I think, right away. All right, we'll see how that plays out as he is going to the San Francisco 49ers. But the next pick is off the board. Oh. With the 133 pick of the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Rashard Robinson, defensive back, LSU. Yeah. Oh. oh, Rashard Robinson. Combine standout, Rashard Robinson gets drafted <laughs> by the 49ers. Remember, this was Ike Taylor and Maurice jones Drew guy. He was their guy. Yeah, he was supposed to blow it out of the water. I remember at the combine, I think he told him they was going to run super fast. In the four twos, I four think. Four twos, I think yeah. he said what four he, twos. What he run? Um, he didn't run that. No. He but, hey, he's that. in the NFL. He, he is in the NFL. He has talent for sure. Yeah. Uh, inconsistent on the edge, but he brings some, some, some traits that you can build around. This is a guy that you're hoping he can get on the field, can outplay his draft status. Painfully thin, but really, really talented cover corner. I mean, he's got some really, really good talent. Very, very thin, and kicked off the team as well at LSU. So, I mean, character is a concern. And no, he's still got good speed. He didn't test, you know, he went into four twos, but he wasn't a four four. So, a uh, talented player, though, but can the character be overcome? We'll see. But let's start with another pick to the San Francisco 49ers, Richard Robertson of LSU. And that's generous to say of LSU. He's been off the team for a while. He, he's got an interesting skill set. In Obviously, there's a lot to work with, but there's a lot that has to be done here. Robinson, when you look at him, he has the length at 6'2". He's lean, 171 pounds. Ran in the four threes at his pro day workout, a 4'3'8 at that size. He's got long arms, 32-inch arms, and he, he shows on tape that he will support the run. He can play press man. He's got some versatility, but here's the deal. He played in just 20 games and had eight starts over two seasons with LSU. 
didn't play in 2015 after being suspended and eventually dismissed from the program, stemming from an arrest in June 2015 for unauthorized entry into quarterback Anthony Jennings' apartment where multiple items were stolen. So this is one of the all-time high-risk, high-reward type prospects. It's At this point in the draft, I guess you understand it. A lot of well, tools to work with. Let, let's make sure we understand this. He was kicked off the team before right. the arrest. So, I mean, th this is a guy, look, you see the ability, Mel, but it's, uh, you've heard some people talking about he's not a bad kid. He was just in the wrong crowd, but that's got to be cleaned up. It does. I think you look at the ability at this point in the draft, you think about where he can be two years down the road, matures a bit, he's got the talent, he certainly has that recovery ability with that incredible speed, but you're right. Uh, to me, there's some other corners out there that were productive and solid and consistent this year and reliable that could have gone uh, prior to Robinson. Yeah, fourth round is what you typically define as the boomer bust area, and this guy would be the quintessential boomer bust type of player with all kinds of physical ability, but the bust the bus factor comes into play with character off the field here. So this is where you go ahead and you try and take a chance. Hope that your program can get a guy like this to come around and kind of make better decisions and just see if you can get something out of him. Well, so Trent Balky's rolling the dice here. The bright spot is you've seen it work out for Tyron Matthew, who was kicked right. off the team. He has been a stellar player and perhaps mo most importantly, a stellar citizen in Arizona. So we'll see what plays out for Ashard Robinson. Meanwhile, we talk. With the 142nd pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Ronald Blair, defensive end, Appalachian State. So, DJ, you and I are going to double team this one, okay? Because <laughs> we State. both love this kid. I had a third round grade. That's what I'm Ronald talking about, Blair. Mike. He's 6'3", 281. I think we have some tape on him also that I'd like to run through when we get done the tape. We're going to let DJ tell a story. Now, 284, I thought he was dominant against Clemson. What a football player. I thought. I gave him a third-round grade. He goes in five. You want to talk about quick and powerful. Against Clemson, he played inside. He played outside. I thought he was dominant against Clemson. Now, people don't like his length. He only ran 5-1-5 in the 40. The measurables hurt him a little bit. Forget the measurables. At the end of the day, this kid's a football player. Jimmy O'Neill, the defensive coordinator in San Francisco, is going to love him. Tell you what, Mike, talking to head coach Scott Satterfield, who was one of the coaches that when I played there, and I asked him, "What? tell me a little bit about Ronald Blair. And he said, this will tell you all you need to know about him. This is a guy who hurt his hamstring as a true freshman. He was on the field, hurt his hamstring, came out of a game against Samford. The game got really tight. They needed him. He went back in the locker room. He had to put his uniform back on because he'd been in street clothes. Came out, made a big stop. They go on to win the game, end up winning the conference that year. Just an ultra, ultra competitive kid. I think they got a good one. So the last time we saw the Oakland Raiders pick, they chose, they moved up 14 spots to take Connor Cook. And um, that was uh, one of the first quarterbacks. With the 145th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select John Theus, tackle, Georgia. So Bulldog off the board, land 6'6", 313 pounds for yeah. assessment. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to help uh, in the pass protection issues that, that they have right now. They're maybe concerned about on the right side. John Theus is a try-hard, tough player from a very good conference. But I think from a physical standpoint, he's going to have a very difficult time matching up against NFL talent. So this, this, this one kind of surprised me a little bit in this spot. With the 174th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Shan Cooper, offensive tackle, Ole Miss. Fan Cooper, uh, who practiced every day against that line that had Robert Kandice on it. Lance, your evaluation. You know, he had to step in and play the role for Laramie Tunsil. When Tunsil was out, Cooper had to slide from the right side over to the left side. Um, and you see him right here playing some left tackle. He's got some strength and power. And 
I don't know if he's going to be a tackle or a guard, but he does have some power. As a pass protector, I don't think he has enough to, to get it done as a, as a starting tackle. But then again, you'd be surprised in the league what ends up starting. And that's not to denigrate Fawn Cooper. That's just to say that you can be a little stiff. You can have a little issues with athleticism or change of direction. You can still end up starting in the NFL. So Fawn Cooper is a big man with some power. Big man with some power. The versatility certainly will help. Probably best destined to play on the right side at right tackle. Yeah. But he's played both sides during his career at Ole Miss. Throw him out there, see what happens in the preseason. Who knows what sticks. See how that shakes out. Meanwhile, San Francisco has taken the other former quarterback at Florida, Louisiana Tech's Jeff Driscoll. Many thought the next Tim Tebow didn't work out, moved on to Louisiana Tech and put up big numbers. Not many guys have worked out at Florida playing the quarterback position. He transferred, more quarterback friendly system, and really was succeeded and regained his confidence, I think, as a quarterback. Height, weight, speed, mobility, toughness, he's got all of those things. When he's in rhythm and his first receiver, his first look is open, he's really good. It's going through progressions and processing information, that's where he's going to have to really make improvements. He does not have a great natural feel yet. We'll see if that comes. Sometimes that can't be coached, but sometimes it can be. We'll see, but there's a lot to work with from a physical tool standpoint. He's a dangerous now. runner, this kid. I mean, he could beat you with his legs. He's big. He's 6'4", 235 pounds. Ball placement improves. Consistency improves. Maybe you have something. There was talk at one point Driscoll could be maybe a day two pick. Here he is near the end of the sixth round. All right, so he With the 211th pick of the 2016 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Kelvin Taylor, running back, Florida. All right, we talked before about a member of the Watt family hearing his name called. Now it's a member of the Taylor family, son of Fred Taylor, Kelvin Taylor. Bloodlines, huh? That bloodline. It's a bloodline pick. This is the bloodlines pick. Um, physical running back, a guy that is a bell cow for the Florida Gators. Does a good job of finding creases on the inside. There you see him putting in the zone. He has some traits that you look for in the position, the vision, the balance, the body control. Not the explosive athlete that his dad was, but I think he can be productive in the right environment. Yeah, I think he has right. pretty good feel as well in the hole. And he, you know, the lack of explosiveness is really going to hurt him up. But I think if he did have a little bit more, we're talking about a fourth round player right there because he understands the position as he should. A lot of plays and is involved extremely accurate long snapper and really performed well in that Oklahoma State game yes, in he the did. rain. Without Trey. question, Kelvin Taylor, <laughs> the son of Fred Taylor, okay? His father ran for over 11,000 yards, most of them with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kelvin Taylor also played at Florida, played pretty well. He did. Now you look about uh, Kelvin Taylor, great feet. I mean, he made multiple cuts on one run several times. When I watched him on tape, impressive. Didn't time well at the combine, 4-6, but he showed some first. You think back to the Tennessee game where he spotted some daylight, went 47 yards for a touchdown, became much more, I think, successful and much more of a factor catching the football out of the backfield this year. He had 17 catches, only had seven his first two years, so he has... Shows you explosiveness, plays faster than times, and I love the fact that he can, there you go, it's stop on a dime, make a cut, and I'll tell you what, uh, Kelvin Taylor at this point in the draft, as a running back becoming steals, as we I, talked about every I year, Todd, he, you can't expect to get any other position, the kind of value you do get at running back on day three. He has the ability to develop into a really big-time contributor, and also had zero fumbles on 510 career uh, touches. Let me just say this, he's got to mature and pick a better crowd to be with off the field if he's going to take advantage of all of his physical tools on it. All right, we move on to Dallas. inch vertical and a 10 8 broad jump well listen if you want someone that's going to catch everything in the neighborhood san francisco has found one from michigan state senior aaron burke small hands but short hands i thought he was he was the mvp of this football team he allowed connor cook to have a go-to option this year he didn't do a lot up until this past season. he was a great player 
final campaign for Michigan State. Started out slow, but he evolved into a player who caught everything thrown his way. Yeah, and Connor Cook misses in the strike zone a lot and forces you to work sometimes for throws. And this guy made Connor Cook look better on a lot of plays. For a guy who only ran four, five, six, he had 21 receptions of 20 plus right. yards, which speaks to the fact that this guy can win at the catch point. Contested catches, he can go up and get it. You see it right here. Yeah, you yep. see it in his highlight over and over and over again. Those are the kind of things that will endear him to Chip Kelly come training camp time and then making this team ultimately for the regular really season. Really tough competitor, and I thought a savvy guy in terms of finding soft spots in zones and just knowing where to be. Last five. It's now Western Kentucky three. And uh, I was about to say, Buckingham Palace won until I saw Iwara behind Prince Charles right there. Um, and hey, but he's from Tennessee, from Nashville, Tennessee, but he went to Western Kentucky. Which is about an hour away from Nashville. Nashville's a big hub for Western Kentucky. But this is a kid who can flat out fly. Ran on the track team at Western Kentucky as well. If you watch him on tape, Daniel and I actually watched him together. I got a tip on, on this guy, and I said, hey, sit down and watch this guy with me. And what did we notice right away? Guy can fly. All right, he flat out can run, similar to the kid we watched from Maine a couple of years ago, that corner. We watched him and just watched him flash it. Okay, now I get it. Speed, stock and trade for him, plays a corner position. Special teams is where he'll have to make a living right out of the gate. Browns.